Welcome back, everyone, to Matt A35. Uh, I hope you guys all had a good reading week last week. Um, just a, an initial announcement, we have a, a Canada Day is tomorrow, so there will be no tutorials today or tomorrow. Uh, and it is a University of Toronto presidential holiday on Friday, so there will be no lecture on Friday. So uh, week seven is going to be half uh, today and half next Wednesday. So it's going to be a Wednesday, Wednesday week. Uh, and we're going to teach you guys all about differential equations now. So we have uh, finished uh, regression land, and now we've moved on to differential equation land. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started. So now, what is a differential equation? A differential equation, uh, sorry, so let's start with uh, something a, a bit easier. What's an equation? So an equation relates together a couple of different variables, let's say x, y, and z, and a solution is a set of values that makes the, that equation true. So for example, we might have something like uh, x squared plus 2y plus xz is equal to 0. And if you had something like that, you might have a solution. Um, let's say one of the uh, solution could be x is equal to 1, y is equal to minus 1, and z is equal to 1. So if you plug all those numbers in, you'll find that it, the equality is true. Oh, sorry. Um, there are other possible solutions. For example, you might say, well, uh, what if we let x equal to 0, y equal to 0, and z equal to 0. So there are often multiple possible solutions to an equation, or, um, and the same is true of a differential equation, except instead of just having variables, you have derivatives of uh, variables as functions of other variables. So a differential equation relates variables and their derivatives, and the solution is a function that makes the uh, equation true. So for example, uh, let's say we have a really simple one. Let's say 5 is equal to dy dx. Uh, so you also might call this uh, y prime. So I mean, this is fairly easy to solve, right? We were just saying that uh, the solution to this, or one solution at least, uh, is y is equal to 5x. Um, now, we might have some other solutions, of course. So as we know from our integration part of this lecture, this uh, y equal 5x plus 1 also solves this uh, uh, also solves this differential equation, and so that's also a solution. So if you plug that in, you still get that y prime is equal to 5. Um, so now there are some slightly more complicated equations as well. So for example, you might have that, uh, let's say... Uh, oh. um, well, we'll see some more complicated examples a little bit later. Um, and let's say that we have, oh, no, let's go, go ahead and give another example. Let's give a slightly more complicated example of y is equal to dy dx. So what we're saying is that y is equal to y prime. Well, this is a little bit harder because what we're saying is that the solution to this uh, differential equation is uh, the an equation where the derivative of itself, uh, derivative is equal to itself. Luckily, we do know a couple examples of these. So uh, you might have y is equal to e to the x. So then dy dx is equal to, uh, still equal to e to the x. And you do have multiple solutions, though instead of just adding a constant, the solutions to this are y is equal to some constant times e to the x, and dy dx is equal to the same thing. Okay, so differential equations relate together derivatives and their relate together derivatives and their um, and variables, and uh, the solutions are equations are fu uh, are functions that make the equations true. So because it's been a couple of weeks since we worked on uh, derivatives, let's just give a quick notational reminder. So. The most unambiguous way to write derivatives is to write both variables. dy dx is the derivative of y uh, as a function of the x variable. dx dt is the derivative of x as a function of the t variable. Uh, we sometimes also use primes or post apostrophes to denote the derivative by x. So we might say y prime is equal to d, uh, actually that should be dy dx, um, sorry, that's dy dx. And you might have things like uh, f double prime is d squared f dx squared. Or sometimes you might also use y to the nth derivative. You use this notation where you have a superscript um, parentheses n uh, to refer to the nth derivative of y as a function uh, again, uh, by x. Now, 
One, I'm going to introduce some other notation, which you might have seen before, especially if you've taken physics classes. This will, uh, I'm introducing it mostly because you'll probably see this at some other point, and it'll be super confusing if you haven't seen it before. So uh, some of you might have seen uh, a dot above a variable. This normally denotes a time derivative by t. Uh, it's really commonly used in physics classes, at physics and engineering classes. Uh, we might occasionally use it, and I, I think I gave you a couple examples of this uh, back when we were in the deriv uh, in like the derivative section. But I'm not entirely sure anymore. So x dot is dx by dt, and y double dot is d squared y by dt squared. Okay. So any questions about this notational reminder? Just wanted to make sure everyone's on the same page. And now we have that. Let's go back to differential equations. So. We have ordinary differential equations, and we have partial differential equations. We're only going to be talking about ordinary differential equations. So these contain only one independent variable. Um, uh, so we have regular derivatives. So what does this look like? If you have something like y prime is equal to dy dx, well, this here is the dependent variable. And this here is the independent variable. Uh, or you can also write it as y is equal to some function of x. Okay, so uh, this is what we mean by dependent and independent variables. Like, which ones are you taking derivatives against versus which ones are you taking derivatives of? Um, and uh, so once you have the sort of notation, uh, ordinary differential equations can only contain one independent variable and all the regular derivatives of some other function. So that's going to look something like... Um, the general form of an ordinary difference equation is f of x, so that here is our independent variable, y, which is our dependent variable, and derivatives of y. So this is equal to 0, where y is equal to some function of x. So let's give a concrete example. That's a, a sort of general way of writing it. But as a concrete example, something like, um, x minus y prime is equal to 0, uh, or something like x squared y double prime plus xy prime plus xy squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so those are all examples of ordinary differential equations, which we're going to be studying over the course of the next uh, uh, couple weeks. I mentioned for the sake of completeness, oh, wrong way, that we also have partial uh, differential equations. Come on. We also have partial differential equations. And partial differential equations contain multiple independent variables. And so then we have to take partial derivatives. So for example, something like if we have some variables, z is equal to f of x, y, where this is our dependent variable. And these are both independent variables. And so these look something like uh, partial z partial x, because that's a partial derivative of z, plus partial z partial y minus z squared y is equal to 0. And uh, this is a very important note. We will not be covering PDEs in MAT A35 other than to recognize them. So I might ask you to recognize that something's a partial derivative, but I will not. we will not be solving these. Um, there are entire courses taught in PDEs, and I don't, we're not going to be able to include this in this course. Um, so. Let's talk about how some examples of these things in, uh, well, in real life. So uh, let's give an example of an ODE. So we are uh, in a pandemic still, unfortunately. Um, and early on in the pandemic, we had all these charts, which you might recognize, these whole flattening the curve charts where we we're trying to uh, draw, draw out the infection curve and saying that if we had lots of precautions, we might decrease the uh, height of the infection curve. So now, well, a little bit later, we'll get into actually modeling the entire infection curve uh, to uh, some degree or another. Uh, but let's start out with a model of just the beginning of the infection curve. So we have this beginning of the infection curve. So let's try, try to model that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to let i of t be the number of infected individuals at time t. And then we're going to say, well, how many people are being infected at any particular point in time? Well, if you have more infected people, then you have a, they all have some uh, probability of infecting other people. And so you might say a first order approximation. So an initial really simple approximation is going to be i of t, uh, i dot of t, because this is a time derivative. So 
uh, is going to be equal to k i of t. So what this means is that the rate at which uh, people get infected is proportional to the number of people who are infected. It sort of makes sense, right? Uh, now note that this uh, it only works in the initial parts of the infection curve. So this is not this curve go, will go like this because um, you don't ever actually cap out. So note that we don't include any information about the total number of people in the population, uh, anything about immunity, any of those other factors. Um, and so because of that, uh, this model breaks down as uh, uh, we go on. But still, uh, we can use this as a model for the initial infection rate. And this has a nice closed form solution, which is that i of t is equal to some constant times e to the kt, where c is a constant. And note, this is, what, this is exactly why we get exponential growth. So c you can think of as exponential growth. And you can think of this as initial infected. And this is, of course, why pandemics are so uh, dangerous. Because if you're not, uh, and epidemics are so dangerous. Because if you're not careful, initially you get an exponentially uh, growing number of people who are infected. Until you reach some threshold, of course, at which you know, other phenomena also take place. Uh, so this is an example of an ODE. And we'll come back to the, the various versions of epidemic ODEs later. Um, let me go ahead and give an example of a PDE. So here, uh, we have an example of a PDE. This is a heat diffusion equation. Um, so heat diffusion has, uh, if you have a really cold object uh, on a, um, in, like say, a cold pipe in a, um, in a uh, volume of air, well, what's going to happen is the heat's going to go from the volume of air into the cold pipe. And so it's going to heat that up while cooling down the air around it. And so this is the process. Uh, so if you ignore convection current, so if you ignore movement of air, you can think of this as just heat slowly diffusing outward, or coldness diffusing outward as heat diffuses in. And this is normally modeled by this complicated PDE here, which we're not going to study, but this is the actual PDE for heat diffusion in three dimensions. And the thing you'll notice is that uh, our function u is a function of u of t, x, y, and z, uh, is a function of four independent variables. And uh, there are PDEs, uh, second order PDEs actually, of each of these variables involved in uh, the heat diffusion equation. Okay, so uh, hopefully you guys all have been paying attention because it is now time for us to try it out. Uh, so I want you guys to classify each of the following as a typical equation, as an ODE, as a PDE, question mark, or none of the above. Note that you, strictly speaking, you can think of an ODE as a PDE, but just uh, give the most specific classification. So let's start off with uh, x squared plus 5x plus y squared plus uh, uh, is equal to 5xy. So is this a typical equation? Is this an ODE? Is this a PDE? OK, yep. This is just an ordinary equation. You can solve it using the standard techniques. What if we make it slightly more complicated? What about this? Uh, oh, let me reset before you reply. So is this uh, x squared plus 5y prime plus y squared plus 4xy prime is equal to 4xy prime? So uh, it looks like most people got this right. This is indeed an ODE because it has a ordinary derivative. Uh, in this case, it's y prime, which is uh, dx, the, uh, or sorry, dy dx. Um, so let's give another one. Let me reset. Um, so t squared x dot plus 5t uh, is equal to x. Um, so what is this? OK, so we're getting some a's and some b's. Um, so is this a typical equation? Ah, so now this is where it's important to recognize the differences in our notation. So if you look at this uh, x dot here, this here is notation for dx dt. It's sort of weird notation, so I'll try not to use this notation too often. But it is a notation that's very common in physics uh, for a time derivative. And so this here, here does have a derivative. And so it's not just a typical equation. This is, in fact, this is actually an ODE. OK, so let's uh, go on. What about this one here? Let me reset before you guys start replying. 
Oh, yeah, yes, it is a dot. Sorry, um, it might not have shown up too clearly. And so if that was the reason, don't worry about having gotten it wrong. Um, another reason why I probably won't be using dots too much. Okay, so this here, uh, is, well, it's very obviously a PDE, and you can tell because I have partial derivatives. This is del x, del z by del x, and del z by del y instead of ordinary derivatives. So if you see curly, if you see the curly d's, it is almost certainly a PDE. So we're not going to worry too much about this in uh, this course. Um, and lastly, oh, uh, lastly, let's do this one here. Oh, uh, wait, did I mean to do that one? I guess I did. Okay, so it, what... Uh, is it a PDE if there are two dependent variables? Ah, so no, not necessarily. So we'll actually be getting to this later. So we will have examples where there are two dependent variables. Uh, what it turns into is it turns into a system of uh, ordinary differential equations instead. Um, here, uh, as opposed to just one, um, and so no, that doesn't turn it into a PDE. So it turns it into a PDE if there are two independent variables. Okay, and uh, this one, I don't know why I put this example in. This is obviously just another example of a PDE. Um, okay, so we, are, we all recognize these things, and this is important because it's good to know what kinds of problems you're dealing with. Uh, sorry, I'm catching up on the chat. Isn't an ODE if it is Y double prime? Yes, it is, uh, because Y double prime is still a derivative uh, with respect to one variable. Uh, it's not a function if there are two dependent variables, right? Um, so you can think of it as a function uh, to a vector if there are two dependent variables. And we'll be getting into that later. So this, this will be something that we will cover later because we will be covering two variable systems. Um, for now, though, there's only one. Uh, we're only going to have one dependent variable and uh, one independent variable. So that's what we're going to start with, and then we're going to add in more later. OK. So time versus space. So often in practice, ODEs will describe how system changes with time as the only independent variable. And sometimes we'll call it independent variable x, and sometimes we'll call it t, but we only have one independent variable, and that's what makes it an ODE. Often, PDEs include how a system changes with space. So as you uh, th think about the change in the temperature uh, as you go along, say, uh, Lake Ontario. Um, so PDEs include how systems change with space, and sometimes also with time, and so you have multiple independent variables. Uh, and this is the common, most common setting in which you'll see these two things. Now, obviously, you can have an ODE along like a metal rod um, because there's only one variable of uh, like distance along the rod. Um, but for the most part, when you talk about ODEs, uh, there's only one independent variable. And very, very often, in practice, that variable will be time. OK, so now let's go and talk about some specific types of ODEs. Uh, and then um, uh, we'll uh, try classifying. So these are some more. Uh, specific types of ODEs that we'll be teaching, some of which we'll be teaching you how to solve. OK, so first, let's start off with the general form of an ODE. And I'm also going to mention that because this has an nth derivative, this is an nth order uh, ODE. Uh, since location has two variables, it is always in a PDE, right? Um, so that depends on what the location is. Uh, so we have a question in the chat. Uh, um, if something has two, has uh, if you're looking at the location, and let's say you're looking at the location along a string, so maybe you want to describe. Um, so th this is something that might come up if you're going to describe, say, the amplitude along a string uh, changing because of vibrations. So think about the guitar string, and so then that might just be an ODE, uh, assuming that it's a constant wave and isn't changing in time. Um, but basically, uh, but generally, yes. Generally, if you uh, have like locations in space, they will be a PD. Uh, you, they will be part of a PDE. But there are exceptions, obviously. Okay, so we have this general form of an ODE, which is our nth order ODE, which is some function, some arbitrary function. You can have anything in here that you want of um, your independent variable x and your dependent variable y, and uh, the up to the nth um, uh, nth derivative of y with respect to x. Um, we're not going to learn how to solve these. In fact, in the general case, we don't always, in fact, know how to solve these. We uh, usually do. Uh, well, that's not even actually true. So in the general case, we don't know how to solve these. But there are specific cases where we do. So one case that we will be covering is going to be um, a first order ODEs. So this is a function uh, that, oh, um, I that there's a typo there. I apologize for that. So there should be, uh, this is f of x, y, and y prime uh, is equal to 0. 
Okay. Uh, and yeah. Okay. So this is just some function of um, uh, a first order ODE that includes both a um, uh, x a y, so a single independent variable, a single dependent variable, and a single derivative of that dependent variable. I have typos in a lot of these examples, so I apologize for that. I will be correcting them as I go along. Um, so this is one type of ODE, a first order ODE. So you can't have a second derivative in the first order ODE. That's basically what defines a first order ODE. Uh, we also have these things called pure time ODEs, where you're setting y prime is equal to f of x. So now this will be the easiest type to solve uh, because you can just take the integral of both sides. You can just take the integral. Depends on x, this function here. You can just take an integral. And we'll be solving these in the second uh, half of uh, second half of this class. Uh, and this will be just basically be doing a simple integration like we were doing in the very beginning of class. We also have slightly more complicated things, though. So for example, we have autonomous ODEs, which you know don't have it, uh, don't depend on explicitly on x. So no explicit x dependence. So here, time is only implicit. Uh, it's still present, but you don't. Uh, your equation doesn't relate together those things. So for example, uh, y prime is equal to oh, uh, y prime is equal to y would be an example of that. Because even though you don't have the x variable explicitly in there, it's still part of uh, how the derivative. So the x's are only parts of derivatives and don't appear by themselves. Uh, we also have autonomous first order. So this is uh, where we will be uh, discussing these. Um, so this is just going to be, you can rewrite these actually to be y prime is equal to f of y. Uh, so these um, don't have an explicit dependence on x and only have up to the first derivative, and you can rewrite it as the first derivative is a function of y. Um, and we also have linear ODEs. This is a little bit more complicated, so I'll take a moment to explain. Um, basically, what we have here is you have only one, you're summing together copies of, uh, e, uh, you're summing together derivatives of y um, times some function in x. So the function in x doesn't have to be uh, linear, but you're only having one copy of the y uh, of the nth derivative, one copy of the n minus one derivative, one copy of the um, uh, first derivative, one copy of y, and so on. And so this is what it makes it linear. So um, basically, what you have is things like uh, five y prime plus x y is equal to x, because each of your copies of uh, each of your derivatives of y only appears once. And uh, importantly, another common one is linear first order, which you can rewrite in this form. And the reason you can rewrite this in this form is uh, here. If you have uh, a1 x y prime plus a naught x y is equal to q naught of x, you can divide everything by a1. So then you get y prime plus a naught x over a1x times y is equal to q naught x over a1x. And uh, this here is precisely this form if you let p of x be equal to a naught of x over a1 of x and q of x be equal to q naught of x over a1 of x. Uh, are these all the types we will be solving or all the types in general? These are not all the types in general. Uh, these are just types that um, most, uh, several of which we'll be learning how to solve. Uh, there, there are a couple, uh, some of them we won't solve. Obviously, we will not be solving the general form ODEs. Um, but uh, we will be solving pure time ODEs. We'll be solving, uh, we'll be explaining uh, some techniques for autonomous first order ODEs and for linear first order uh, ODEs. Um, the general nth order we won't really solve, uh, except in very spe special cases. So these are a couple specific types that we're going to cover today, and then we'll cover a couple more types next Wednesday. Okay, but the first thing you have to do in order to solve an ODE is you have to recognize it. And so this is why I'm giving you these examples of specific types of ODEs, which uh, we will then classify. And then later, we'll figure out, the di given a classification, what kind of ODE it is, then we might uh, have a particular technique we know to solve that ODE. Okay, so let's try it out. We're going to, I'm going to ask you to classify these things as either uh, first order, second order, third order, fourth order, or none of the above. 
So let's go ahead and reset my uh, chat here. So y double prime plus y prime plus y squared is equal to 5. So what order is this? Okay, yeah. So because this is second order, uh, because we have, so this is second order because we have a y double prime. So because of this y double prime here. And then, uh, just for the uh, sake of completeness, let uh, here uh, we happen to have uh, dy dx. And so this here is the dependent variable. And this here is the independent variable. OK, so let's go on. So that, that was a bit, uh, that was easy. Let's uh, do another one. So y prime is equal to uh, y prime minus 1 is equal to x squared. OK, yep. So this is first order, as uh, you guys correctly established, because we only have a single y prime here. Uh, the first example was autonomous, right? Uh, we will be getting to that in a moment. So uh, I, I'm at, I will be doing these exact same examples again uh, in uh, autonomous and non-autonomous and things like that. So uh, we'll get to that in a moment, Jordan. OK, so that was a uh, first order. Let's do something a tiny bit more complicated. What about this? dx dy d squared x d times d squared x dy squared plus 1 is equal to c. Um, and uh, let's see, reset the chat. OK, so this one is a little bit more complicated, right? And uh, it's a little bit confusing because I've flipped things around and done things in a super weird way. Uh, I'm going to give you guys another moment for you guys to figure out what order this is. Uh, ah, yeah. So is it a third order because it's multiplying? Well, let's take a look at it. So um, what we have here is we can re- uh, you, This is actually second order because you have your uh, d squared x dy squared. So that is a, a variable effectively. So unfortunately, we don't have a easy way of writing this. But one, another way, of, so if you rewrite this in different notations, so let's let all of our um, y's be equal to t. And then what we'd have is we'd have x dot times x double dot plus 1 uh, uh, is equal to t. So that, that's an equivalent way of writing this. And so x dot times, so one of the things that's important to remember is if you have the derivatives, x dot times x double dot is not equal to x triple dot. When you multiply this together, the first derivative and the second derivative, you don't get the third derivative. Um, and note that this was also a little bit tricky because I also did uh, here. We had I swapped the dx and dy. So normally I won't do this to you, but you should be aware that when you have dx dy, your x is actually the dependent variable, and your y is the independent variable. And this is highly unconventional. But if you do see this, it still is like. Variable names are completely arbitrary. And we try to keep them consistent to make life easier for you. But um, you do need to be a little bit careful about it. So uh, let's see. Does, does everyone sort of understand why this is a second order and not a, a third order now? The 2 moves 2. Uh, why is that? I don't quite understand your question. Um, oh, why the square moves when you're taking the second derivative? Is that the question, Sam? So um, this is because uh, if, if that was your question, you'll note that the, we have this operator. So we have d by dx. So this is an operator that's applied to some function. And so uh, when you, uh, our notation uh, is when you apply this function twice, d by dx, then uh, apply to some function, then that's, we write that as d squared dx squared applied to this function. So this has to do with what it means to take a derivative. Um, and uh, we can go over this a little bit uh, later in uh, office hours if you still have this question. But this is a notational thing, where um, the actual object that you're doing when you're taking a derivative is d by dx, or d by dt. Um, and you're applying it to some other variable. So you're taking the, x deri the derivative in the x direction of some function f or some function y or whatever. 
Uh, does that make sense? Okay, but now that we've gone through that uh, really tricky one, let's uh, give you another... Oh, reset if I can type that correctly. So let's do uh, another one. So, uh, y prime 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 plus 4y prime prime plus 4y plus x squared. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, I need to... Okay, yep, everyone got this right. This was nice and easy. This is just fourth order. Um, okay, and I have one last one, and then we'll start classifying again uh, by the other, like, salient uh, points. So, what about x? Uh, let me reset before you start wiping. And so, x dot is equal to t squared plus 1. Okay, so again, this wasn't too hard. So, this is first order, because you have dx dt, and that's your dependent variable, and that's your independent variable. Okay, so that's all well and good. Now let's do it again. Uh, and this time I'm going to ask you if it's pure time, if it's autonomous or nihilar. So this gets back to Jordan's question earlier. So, um, y double prime plus y prime plus y squared is equal to 5. Is this autonomous? Is this pure time? Is this both of the above? Uh, is it, um, or is it none of the above? Okay, so it looks like everyone's replying A for... Autonomous. So autonomous means that there, there's no explicit dependence on time, on the, on the independent variable. Pure time means that you have a derivative that's only dependent on the uh, independent variable. Uh, and then we have the question, can it, be, can it be both of the above? And then we have the question of, uh, can it be none of the above? So uh, in this first case, that is correct. So this is a, uh, autonomous because we have y prime is equal to dy dx. So it's autonomous, since it has no direct x dependence. Okay, even though the x is still hidden in there in the y primes, uh, there's no direct x dependence uh, when you write it out in this way. Okay, let's do the second one now. Uh, oh, let me reset. I think I should figure out an easier way of resetting when typing in chat every time. But let's say we have y prime is equal minus one is equal to x squared. So is this uh, autonomous? Is this pure time? Is this both of the above? Uh, is it a uh, question mark or is it none of the above? Okay, so uh, it looks like most people are replying that it is uh, pure time. We have a couple people who replied a couple other answers. So let's take a look at this. The first thing we're going to do is let me rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this as x dot uh, sorry, y prime is equal to x squared plus 1. And here, x is our uh, uh, independent variable. And so this it turns out to be a pure time because y prime depends only on x and nothing else. It doesn't depend on... Um, so for, for the record, constants don't really count against the sort of dependence in this particular case. So this is a pure time... Um, uh, equation, and you can solve this by just taking integrals. Uh, let's go on to the next one. So this one's slightly more complicated. Uh, let me reset before you answer. So pure time can't have a second order. Um, it depends. So these classifications all depend on who's writing down definitions, and people will have things defined slightly differently. I would say that you can have a second order pure time if it doesn't depend on the first order or on y. So like, so if this was y double prime minus 1 is equal to x squared, that would still be pure time. Because then you could just take the integral twice to get y. Um, I'm not going, we're not going to discuss that too much, and I won't give you examples. Uh, well, I won't call them examples of that. So um, this pure time idea is basically, you should think of pure time equations as ones you can solve by just taking the integral. And sometimes you might need to take the integral twice. Um, Okay, so it looks like uh, people think that this equation here is pure time. Ah, yes. So if there's both a y and a y double prime, then it isn't pure time. Um, so uh, note that here, 
this thing here is actually none of the above. Uh, because it depends on y and has two different derivatives. And so the answer here is actually none of the above. Okay, so just be a little bit careful about that um, when you're doing this, especially because sometimes you can write it out in these weird ways. Um, so this depends on both the independent variable and on um, uh, two different derivatives, um, the first derivative and the second derivative. So if something is going to be autonomous, then we can't have a direct dependence on the independent variable. And so the independent variable is the variable in the bottom of the dx dy or dy dx. So it's whichever variable is in the bottom. And so that means that this here is not um, autonomous because it depends directly on y, which is the independent variable in this case. So note this here is the independent variable. So because it depends directly on the independent variable, it cannot be autonomous. At the same time, pure time means that it can't depend on the other derivatives as well. So we have two different derivatives, two different derivatives, so not um, pure time. OK? So one easy way of thinking about pure time is if you can just take integrals multiple times and solve the problem, then uh, it is a uh, pure time equation. And we'll see this in a, bit, a little bit more detail in a moment when we actually solve these things. OK, so let's go ahead and give the last one, um, which, oh, sorry, let's, uh, oh, sorry, we have two more, actually. So uh, y, uh, the fourth derivative of y plus, oh, let me reset. So uh, let's see. So it looks like we have a couple of different answers. And it looks like we're split a bit between b and e. So now there are several different questions you guys should be asking yourself. One is, uh, what, oh, sorry. What are the de dependent and independent variables? So y prime is equal to dy dx. So this here is the uh, dependent variable. And this here is the independent variable. So does it depend directly on um, the, does it depend directly on the uh, independent variable? Yes, so it is not autonomous. Are there multiple different derivatives in here? If there are multiple different derivatives, then it cannot be pure time. And so therefore, the answer to this is none of the above. None because depends on y double prime, y four, four primes, y and x. So it's too many different dependencies. And so the answer to this actually is E. OK. Could it ever be both? Um, do people think it could be both? Uh, why don't you type in chat if you can think it, uh, let's say A if you think it can be both, and B if you think it can't be both. Or sorry, uh, let's, uh, let's see. So can it be both? Can it be both autonomous and pure time? OK, so the, the, we're pretty split on this. Um, so the answer to that is it actually it depends on what exactly you mean by depending on uh, pure time and by, by depending on time. So for example, um, the equation, uh, let me give the example, the equation, let's say y prime is equal to 0. Is this autonomous? Is it pure time? Um, so the answer to both of those questions is actually yes. And so it can actually be both of the above. So this is uh, both. But it's sort of a weird degenerate case because uh, you, uh, you need to, because if you have these sorts of cases, basically you're set, setting it equal to some constant. And that's really easy to solve. So if it's both autonomous and pure time, it is super easy to solve. Oh, because it, um, it doesn't have any dependence on anything other than time. I mean, it also doesn't depend on time. But it, it depends. This is why I was saying it depends a little, a little bit on whether or not you call something that doesn't have an explicit dependence on time still pure time. And normally, when you're solving these sorts of things, you're saying that it can only depend on up to time. Um, 
And so this particular example is both. The real reason I'm asking you to do these classifications, though, isn't for you to do them. It's because um, this is a starting point for actually solving the equations. And so part of the reason I don't, didn't give you any examples of autonomous pure time is because this equation is super easy to solve. OK, let's get the last one. So is this, uh, oh, let me reset. Is this autonomous pure time uh, both or none? OK, so it looks like we started getting some replies. OK, yeah, so this here is, is pure time. x dot is equal to dx dt, and this is pure time. x dot depends only on t. OK, and let me give one last the classification set before we move on. Uh, I think this is actually the last slide in this uh, first por portion of lecture. So let's try it out again with linear versus nonlinear, um, or both, or none. Uh, actually, I, I, should, um, I should go ahead and uh, take away both of the above, because that's not really an interesting statement. Um, so I'm going to remove that as an option, because that depends on whether you define nonlinear to include linear, and I don't want to get into that semantic argument right now. Um, so it looks like, uh, what does linear mean again? So linear means that all of the copies of the derivatives only appear once, and they uh, can possibly be, uh, all the copies of the uh, dependent variable and their derivatives can only appear up to once, and uh, they can't be uh, have powers or be multiplied against each other. Uh, but they can be multiplied against um, any function of the uh, of the uh, independent variable. Okay, so this here is nonlinear because we have a y squared. So it's quadratic. It has a quadratic um, uh, function of your um, dependent variable. So therefore, it's nonlinear. How about this one? Is this linear or nonlinear? Uh, let me reset before you reply. Okay, so we're getting some mixed responses. Though so it looks like, okay, it looks like uh, most people are going with linear, and that is correct. It is linear because independent variable x doesn't count for figuring out if a linear, if a, an ODE is linear or nonlinear. Okay, now we have our super complicated one. Is this linear or nonlinear? Uh, and let me reset before going on. OK, so it looks like people are applying mostly B. And this is uh, correct. So this is actually nonlinear because we're multiplying together two derivatives. OK, uh, and uh, we already know what the next one. So uh, let me reset before you apply to the next one. Is this linear or nonlinear? OK, so it looks like uh, an overwhelming number say that it is linear, and that is correct. Because the x squared doesn't count, because x is the uh, independent variable. So x squared doesn't matter. And uh, let's go lastly. Uh, we have x dot is equal to t squared plus 1. Uh, let me reset again. Um, is this linear or nonlinear? OK, it looks like people are, um, again, saying that it's linear. And that's correct. Because here, t is dependent variable. And t squared doesn't matter.
So the dependent, you can, oh, oh, sorry, uh, is independent variable. Is independent variable, and so t squared doesn't matter. So the independent variable, you can have like powers of it, you can have sine, cosine of it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But uh, for the uh, note also that uh, basically uh, you, you just need a copy, a single copy untransformed. So if you take logs or exponentials of each of the derivatives, then that also makes it nonlinear. So basically you need a single copy multiplied by some function of x, uh, which can, um, okay. And I think that is a good spot to uh, end the first part of lecture. Um, let's go. Ahead. So if it had a, ah, yes, um, that's a very good question. So sine of y prime plus y is equal to 0 is nonlinear. So because of the sine. Basically, the question is, do you have a nonlinear transformation of your, um, your dependent variable or its um, derivatives? Ah, so why is this linear? It's because you're adding together. Uh, so there's why is uh, let me actually go ahead and stop the recording. Uh, no, I won't stop it yet. So this might be important. Why is four linear? Uh, it's because you have just um, you have each of these copies of these derivatives, but each of them is only transformed by multiplying it by some function of x. So you transform it by multiplying it by some function of x, and therefore it's linear. Because you don't transform the uh, variable itself, so you don't take like y squared, and you don't take like uh, sine of y or like um, exponential of y prime, and so because you're only transforming it by multiplying by some function of x, uh, where four is a function of x, uh, it is therefore linear. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, and we'll be back in let's say five minutes. <laughs>